these images or these messages or this passion is, is constantly coming through you and sometimes you, you have to learn how to separate yourself from it in order to exist in the, and relate with the, the world. The Mirror, KeyDigitalMedia.com presents Portraits. First time that I, uh, when I, well, when I was young, when I was drawing on walls in my parents' house, my mother decided to buy me art equipment. I was about five or six years old, and it was mainly drawing materials. By the time I was 11, she had purchased a, um, an oil painting kit, a beginner's oil painting kit, because I, I saw her painting by numbers one day, and I said, wow, mom, could you get me one of those paint by numbers kits? She, she got the kit for me. I did the paint by number, two little, pic, two little portraits by numbers. I finished that, so I started painting on the back of the, of the, uh, the cardboard. And she saw the paintings that I did and said, wow, you can paint. So she went and bought an oil, beginner's oil painting set. I sold my first painting, my first oil painting, when I was around 12, 13 years old. After that, I continued to sell my artwork because my mother was selling Avon and she would have Avon parties in the basement at uh, our, our, our home in Glen Arden, Maryland. I continued to, to uh, move forward in art through high school. After high school, I went to Prince George's Community College where I ac actually focused on art history and advertising illustration and commercial art. I did take painting one and drawing one and two, but after painting one, they were trying to structure me to not be creative, but to have academic knowledge. And they didn't teach me how to actually survive in the real art world, so I left in order to do what I knew I had to do. I had to learn how to make money off this artwork. Um, during that period of time, I, I, had, I did have a child at the age of 18, so I had to go to work. So I was working full time at night. I was going to school during the day, but I was always doing freelance artwork and art exhibits. It wasn't until 1977 that I left the post office working at night and I began to work for a graphic company called New Day Group in Washington, D.C. at 12th and Franklin. I a uh, partner and friend of mine, good artist friend of mine, Tony Dyson, and I would just pile on the pavement. We were showing our work at different clubs, anywhere we could show our artwork. Um, we got the job at New Day because they believed that we had the skills and they could teach us the rest. That was a real great experience because I was able to do work for people, uh, George Duke, Johnny Guitar Watson, Parliament Funkadelic, Chaka Khan, uh, Edwin Hawkins Singers, just to name a few. But we were also doing things for Summers in the Park program for Washington, D.C. Um, Recreation uh, Commission, D.C. Arts Commission. We were doing jobs for them, so we had an extensive contract. The only thing about the job was that it didn't give you benefits, so you got paid per job. So in having a child, I went back to the post office in 1978, August of 78. But I continued to freelance and I did an illustration for books, as well as continued to work for different bands and newspapers in the Washington, D.C. area. I began to concentrate on my fine art career and during after my wife and I got married in 1980, she began to um, persistently tell me to go to the galleries and try to get my work in galleries. So I went to Sun Gallery and Ron Chisholm, the manager at the time of Sun Gallery, allowed me to sell my prints there. Um, I, was, I was amazed that my work was in the company of, of artists like Huey Lee Smith and Elizabeth Catlett, Lois Melo Jones. And I, I learned a lot, and then I began to connect with a lot of the artists who were in the D.C. area who were my contemporaries, but some of them were from the Afro-Cobra school. And I still have connections with these artists to this day. They have really 
helped me and brought me along the way. And uh, another good artist friend, um, Duffy Nobles and Larry Puncho Brown, were part of an art group that my wife and I were part of called the Artist Consortium or the Black Artist Consortium when we first developed that art group. And uh, we've had many different art groups and right now I've, I've, I've moved to Charleston, South Carolina because of the tourist industry and also because of the art community. They have a very, a, a, a very extensive art community here as well as different festivals that you can participate in and you're not too far from Savannah and Atlanta, Georgia, but I do frequently go back and forth to Washington, D.C. because that's where my, my, my roots are and that's where my heart is in, in a sense. That's where my, my heart is. Our artist is, is a person or, yeah, person who is, who is uh, channeling energies through themselves and they use techniques that they have learned to make it easier to express themselves, to express those, those emotions or those feelings. And our, our artist, who is a creative artist, it is, after a while, it, it is a blessing and it is a curse. It's a double-edged sword because these, these, these images or these messages or this passion is, is constantly coming through you and sometimes you, you have to learn how to separate yourself from it in order to exist and, the, and relate with the, the world in general, people in general. Because this information that you're getting, these, these vibrations or this passionate feeling that you're getting, you can't turn it off like a water faucet. It's, it's a continuum. And it, and it resonates all the time. So in that way, it, it is a blessing and a curse. That energy has to uh, come out. It's like you're, you, you're giving birth to certain things uh, that are coming through you, that are channeling through you. So you're a cipher. And once you, 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 you present this to the world, then they interpret it. Each person interprets it a different way. And not even you, the, the cipher, the person that this stuff is flowing through, sometimes you don't even know what these uh, messages are until you actually stop and separate yourself from that state of um, creativity to analyze it for yourself. Uh, I learn a lot from the viewers after I do my artwork and actually listen to what they say. And I say, wow, I didn't even see that. And, and they'll see stuff that I'm putting down but never saw it during the process. So it's, it's, a, it's an interesting journey. Um, it's fun. And as long as, as long as an artist stays in a state of awe, like a child, then it's a very, very, very good journey very good journey but you have to keep that little child alive once that child is gone buddy <laughs> you're on a different stroke